Welcome back. We're now starting section 8 on page 547. Okay, and I think we're in the third test. So problem number 1. If e is a set of even numbers, even integers, sorry, e is a set of even integers, p is a set of positive integers, and f is a set of integers less than 5, which of the following integers will be in all three sets? So we're looking for something that meets all the constraints. So it has to be even. It has to be positive, positive, and it has to be less than 5. OK, so choice A is 6. 6 is not less than 5. Choice B is 4. 4 is even, 4 is positive, 4 is less than 5. So the answer is B. And the other choices don't work, because C, 1, is odd. D, 0, 0 is not positive. And the last choice, e, negative 2, well, that's not, that's not positive either. Problem number 2. And so our answer was b is equal to 4. Or b, the choice b was 4. Problem number 2, if 8, 8 plus the square root of k is equal to 15, then what is k equal? Well, subtract 8 from both sides, you get square root of k is equal to 7. Square both sides, k is equal to 49. Next problem, problem number 3. Let's see if I can um, use a clear image. Problem number 3. In a poll, 35 people were in favor of building a new library. So 35, yes, they want it. 14 against it. 14 said no. And one person doesn't know. One person has no opinion. What fraction of those polled were in favor of a building uh, uh, were in favor of building a new library? So, the people were in favor were 35, and the fraction of the total people polled, so the total people polled was 35 plus 14 plus 1, right? And what is this? That's 50. So that's equal to 35 over 50. And 35 over 50, if we divide the top and the bottom by 7, you get 7 tenths. So the answer is A. 7 tenths were in favor of the library. Problem number 4. We've got a kind of crazy looking figure here. So we have a line that goes something like this. And we have, let's see, it goes like that. And then it goes like this. It looks something like that. Close enough. And what's going on here? So they tell us that this one, this angle is 70. That's 70. This is 30. And they say that this is t, and this is u. You probably can't read that, but you see it in your own book. And the figure above, what is the value of t plus u? This is the angle game again. Let's see what angles we can figure out. So this is 70. This is 30. So this angle right here, plus 70 plus 30, has to equal 180, right? This angle plus 70 plus 30. 70 plus 30 is 100. So this is 80 degrees right here. If this is 80 degrees, this is the opposite angle to 80 degrees. So that's going to also be 80 degrees. I learned that in geometry class. And so if this is 80 degrees, what are, what are, first of all, what are all of these angles combined equal? t plus u plus 80 are all in the same triangle. So they have to add up to 180. And so we know that t plus u is have to, has to be 100 degrees. And that's choice c. Next problem. Invert. OK, problem number five. Oh, there's a big graph. According to the graph above, between which two consecutive years was the greatest change in the price of coffee? Oh, I think I'm going to have to draw this just so that you see what I see, hopefully. OK. And then let me just write the years. So this is, it goes to 81 through 86. So 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. And let's see, 1981, so let's see, we have $3, 375, 3.75, we have 4, 425, 425. 450, 
75. In 1981, it cost $3.75. It's going to take me a little time to draw this whole thing. In 1982, it was at $3.50. Whoops, that's $3.50 now here, not three. Let me write that. That's $3.50. Back to what I was doing. In 1983, it went to $4.25. 83, it's at $4.25. 1984 went all the way to 475. 1984, 475. 1985 was at 375 again. 1985 looks something like that. And then 1986, 450. 1986, 450. OK, and what are they asking us? Well, let's figure that out. So here the change is 25 cent, uh, 25 cents. Here the change going from this year to this year, it's let's see 25, 50, 75 cents. That's a good contender right there. 75 cents. Going from here to here, we only had a 50 cent change. 50 50 cent change. Then we went from 475 to 350. So this is a pretty big change actually. This looks like our winner. That's from 475 to actually 375 so this is a one dollar change and then we went from 375 to 450 so we had a 75 cent change again so the biggest change happened from 1984 to 1985 choice d all that work for a fairly straightforward problem next problem problem number 6 more drawing for me okay let's see more drawing Got to be focused, Sal. Focused. Okay, so this is negative one. This is negative two. This is one. This is two. One and two. And what does this graph look like? Let's see. We go like from. We go like from here to here. Looks like. Then we stay. We go flat here. And then we go like this, and then we go flat again. And what are they asking? The graph of y equals g of x. So this is y is equal to g of x, as shown above. If g of k is equal to 1, which of the following is a possible value of k? So g of k is equal to 1. So when does this graph equal 1? Well, this graph equals 1 at a different color. It equals 1 here. Oh, it equals 1 here. It, it equals 1 this entire period, right? This is all of these values are where g of x is equal to 1. So what could be the values of k? Well, the values of k could be anywhere between negative 1 and 0. All of those could be values of k, anywhere from here. Because at all of these values, g of k is equal to 1. So let's see, they have choices. Minus 1.5 is here. That's no, that's over there. Minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 is right here. And g of minus 0.5 is right here. So that's 1. g of minus 0.5 is equal to 1. So that looks pretty good. So that is our answer. Problem uh, choice B. Let's see if I can squeeze in problem number 7. I think that would be the most videos I've ever done in, a, in 10, the most problems in 10 minutes. If a, b, and c are different positive integers, and 2 to the a times 2 to the b times 2 to the c is equal to 64, then they want to know what is 2 to the a plus 2 to the b plus 2 to the c. Fascinating. Well, what do we know about exponent rules? 2 to the a times 2 to the b times 2 to the c, that's 2 to the a plus b plus c, right? And we also, what's 2 to the what power is 64? 2 to the 6th power, right? 2 to the 6th power is 64, right? Actually, I'm going to run out of time. So I'm going to do this in the next video. I only have 15 seconds left.